Good evening and welcome. As we worship together, please follow in your service leaflet and respond using the text in bold italics. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yours is the day, O God. Yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us stand in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please read with me, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. 
We will read Psalm 106 responsibly by the full verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forefathers did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they do not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of those who hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors, not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang his songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness, and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Dathan and covered the company of Abraham. Fires blazed up against their company and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We give thanks to Marty Bell for serving as lecturer. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray together the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Welcome to St. Christopher's Evening Prayer. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. All people are welcome to worship with St. Christopher Episcopal Mission, regardless of their faith tradition. The annual meeting of St. Christopher's Mission will be on Saturday, 17th of February, 
at 1.30 p.m. via Zoom. You are encouraged to attend. The missionary team over the past three months has developed a vision statement. Goals and objectives have been set for the next two to three years. The missionary team was led by Thomas Guzman, junior warden with years of experience in developing vision statements. Please read the vision statement at the end of the service leaflet. We are offering prayers for all who are afflicted with COVID-19 around the world. If you would like prayers for yourself, family members, or friends, please contact me and we will pray for you or whomever you request. May each of you feel the love of Jesus Christ. Please stay as safe as possible. And if you are able, reach out to help others in need. Many of the Cuenca residents and immigrants need our support. May each of us serve as a missionary. Today's homily is called The Wilderness. It was written by Michael Toy, an alumnus of Princeton Theological Seminary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilderness. We have arrived. On this first Sunday of Lent, the text thrust us quite suddenly into the wilderness. The start, there's the story of God's promise to Noah after the great flood. Now, this is a beautiful passage of hope and promise and what the church, what church nursery doesn't have a mural or painting of animals all lining up two by two to board the ark. But in this context, we cannot read it without the specter of the diluvial destruction hanging over the passage. And speaking of specters, how about the epistle reading for today? We have Jesus preaching to spirits in the prison from Noah's day, a statement that no one is quite sure how to explain. And of course, from Mark's gospel, 
We also have the baptism of Jesus with the sky torn open, a heavenly voice, and when the Spirit uh, driving Jesus out into the wilderness then. We've set the table. Now, where do we even begin with all this? The story of Noah and the great flood has many eyebrow-raising elements, not the least of which is a genocidal God. Whether or not the story is entirely a metaphor, one has or has historical roots, uh, the fact remains that the story includes a whole lot of people who are seemingly killed by God. Perhaps it is an anachronistic sensibility, but from our position in the 21st century, it does seem unlikely that every human being would have done something to have deserved death. In today's reading, we see the covenant with God, that God has set the bow in the heavens as a promise that God will not flood the entire earth again. But that still does not answer the question of why God killed all those people to begin with. Who are we to make sense of this, this bit of hopeful promise, though without not acknowledging understanding of the rest of the story? Well, we turn to the New Testament with hope for some guidance. In the reading from 1 Peter, there is little clarity gained. Instead, there's a reference to Jesus preaching to spirits in prison from Noah's day. Jesus went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey God. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved uh, from the water, the commentaries are not extremely helpful in providing additional elucidation to these scriptures. There are three main schools of thought when it comes to who the spirits Jesus is preaching, to who they may be. The first story is that Jesus descended to the underworld to preach to the souls who had died in the flood. This would imply that there were souls stuck in a kind of limbo awaiting the birth and the death of Jesus. A second thought is that Jesus preached to Noah, to Noah's contemporaries through Noah himself. And thinking, the thinking goes that the Holy Spirit filled Noah and used him to preach Jesus' message to his living contemporaries. Still others speculate that the spirits in prison are fallen angels associated with the wickedness run rampant before the great flood. Angels. Each of those stories has its own subdivisions and interpretation and lines of implications. It may seem that First Peter reading has only added to our confusion. Fortunately, we still have Mark's gospel to turn to. The text for today begins with Jesus being baptized by John, the heavens torn apart, and a voice for heaven proclaiming, You are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here is a baptism account that is fairly straightforward. You are my son, the beloved. It's a passage about identity. It's a passage that showcases what theologians and philosophers call ontology, or Jesus' nature of being. This is where Mark starts his story. Before the temptation in the wilderness, before healings, before miracles or preaching, Mark starts with this proclamation of identity, the identity of Jesus as a son and the beloved. With this, we can begin to look backward at other texts and see that First Peter passages is in a new light. Whichever way we choose to identify the mysterious 
spirits in prison. The primary purpose of this passage is to point to Christ's identity. Jesus is the one who suffered. And Jesus is the one who triumphed and who sits at the right hand of God. So what does this mean for baptism? It's interesting that the author of the epistle chooses to bring the story of Noah and the floods as a prefiguring of baptism. It is a look backwards. The flood was a disaster, whether it could be read as a literary metaphor or was based on a scientific event, the great flood was a devastating tragedy. Baptism is a look backward. It's a turn toward suffering, toward devastation, and even toward death. It is a look backward at the wilderness that we have come from, and not just individually, but collectively as a people as well. As humanity, as a culture, as a religion, we have come from a truly wild place. We have suffered and we have caused suffering. While the analogy of the flood is a look backward, it's also a look forward to hope. There is a fundamental shift in humanity after the flood. There is an ontological change. There are people who have been saved. There are people who are beloved. No matter who they are or where they come from, the fundamental part of their identity that they are people who have been rescued comes to a full stop. Baptism, according to 1 Peter, is not a removal of dirt from the body. It is a sign of a change of identity. It is a sign that we are rescued, that we are cleansed, and we are made brand new. We are the beloved. We may not understand the suffering that has occurred before, and we may never know why behind the flood or the who of the spirits that were in prison. But whichever way we read these passages, there are two points that come across as clear as day. Christ is with us. Christ is for us. The fundamental message from our text today is summoned up in the collect, which is, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus is mighty to save. And taking that one step further, Jesus is mighty to save each and every one of us. Jesus is mighty to save you. And as the psalmist writes, God is the God of my salvation, the God who is God of the waters and the mighty floods, descended into the depths and the fullness of human suffering for us. <clears throat> now we find our identity in Christ. No matter the pain that we've experienced or are experiencing or will experience, Christ has been there, is there, and will be there for us. And thus, as we enter into this season of Lent, we see the wilderness all around us, and we see the wilderness that we've come from. And we know there's still wilderness yet to come. But through it all, we hold on to our identity in Christ, the identity of God's beloved that ever reminds us us. Christ is with you. Christ is for you. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us reaffirm our faith with words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Creator. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our suffrages, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Christopher, and all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. The Collect for today. Almighty God, who blessed Son, was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Sundays. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem. Grant that we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection may praise you in that city of which he is the light and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our prayer for mission. O oh God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, that the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you join me in the closing prayer, accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of the world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessings of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us a task which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. Be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.